Welcome to Rich Conversations. I just want to say how much I appreciate everyone. It's so interesting to me how we're so different, yet, yet we all make the world go round. We have different personalities, family dynamics, uh, geographical and, and cultural backgrounds, skill sets, interests. It's awesome. So Ken and I, you can listen to our conversation on episode 81 of this podcast, but something we're really into right now is studying the Myers-Briggs personality test. So I'm an ENFP and he's an INFP. And it doesn't really matter if you know what that is yet or, or not or whatever, but uh, the Myers-Briggs is basically this extensive personal test. And, and you answer all of them and based on your results, you fit into like one of 16 personality types. And of course these personality types aren't absolute or very rigid, it's just kind of a, a framework of how how your mind and your brain kind of kind of operates and sees the world. We like learning about all these different types because it helps us better understand how to communicate to other people because we're all different and we're all out in the world and we got to figure out how to work together, right? So if you better understand how other people's brains are kind of wired and what their framework is, you know how how best to communicate with them. And communication is like half of life. The more you dive into these different personalities, you realize again that there's no point to compare yourself to other people because, you know, we're all wired a little differently. It's better to just try to get better yourself and you use your interactions with other people to try to try to live the best you can. We love how it's rooted like internally rather than you know, external factors, like the way astrology kind of is. This one is more, it seems, I don't know, it's very constructive and it's very useful to us. I have to talk about my neighborhood here in Chicago, Uptown. It is fantastic. I love, there's so many different kinds of people. All of our differences enhance the neighborhood. We all bring something unique. A couple of quick observations about my neighborhood. There are a lot of gay men. In Chicago, the gay men, they look really nice. And so when I'm out in the store and say, I'm looking for hairspray, cause I want to look good too. I want to look as good as them. You know, I can just approach a guy and be like, Hey, so I'm looking for a new hairspray. Uh, what do you recommend? And then we have herbal essence hairspray and then we just use it. So then we can, can look fabulous all the time. Something else I notice about the neighborhood are the African immigrants. They're so delightful and pleasant. Sometimes they take, kind of lawn in the checkout lines, but, but that's because they're, they're new. They're still trying to figure this out, right? I haven't had a whole lot of uh, conversations with them deeply. It's just been interactions like directions or you know shared laughs, but uh, it's very enjoyable. Another neighborhood I've been visiting more is Albany Park. Something I've gotten really into lately is making salsa verde. My friends shared with me the recipe they use, and so I've been, been making it a lot. So I'll go over to their neighborhood, which, uh, which is mainly like a really large Latin population. And I'll go to the Mexican grocery store and get, get all the fresh produce for it. I love how we all seem so different physically and both how we're wired internally, but we're all out here and we share the city of Chicago. We have that Chicago vibe. And the reason it works is because Chicago already has a culture that can absorb new people. Chicago is a very friendly and gritty city. I've heard it described as a, a big city with a neighborly feel. And it's kind of this in-between of New York hustle and LA chill. Uh, it's, so, it's so unique. And one of the best parts about traveling is coming back. And when I, when I go from O'Hare to the train or on the bus on my way home, I look around and these are great people, Chicago people. This is why I put so little stock into what I see on social media and the news. It's not reflective of what I experience and what I see in my own life or my immediate communities. It's not real. I'm out here on the ground, on the sidewalks and in the parks, I suppose in the sky as well since we're recording this in a high rise. But what I find more and more is that a life spent disproportionately online 
is a life that breeds fear. There's so much we can learn from other people and so much to be thankful for. Spend the time to observe the beautiful life around us.